Hey everybody, Boris from BK Forest. Welcome to the weekly technicals for the majors for Euro dollar, dollar yen and pound dollar, April 15th to April 19th, 2019. The big story this week was that Euro survived the downdraft. Dollar yen looks like it kind of broke out above the 112 level. And pound actually after all the post Brexit hoopla is now looking very, very laggard and depressed. So the levels have changed a little bit since last week. The euro has kind of moved up now to support at 112, and most importantly, really now looking to probe that whole 113, 114 level where there's a lot more resistance as we uh, as we be able to survive the double bottom and now the triple bottom at around 111.85. The <clears throat> jury's still not out yet. We'll talk about um, some of the data this week that could that could hobble the euro still, but for now it appears that the story is really sold out. That uh, all of the selling has been kind of done, and there's clearly some very serious short covering going on in the euro. We sensed that a little bit um, last week when we said that if they survive it, it's going to be a short covering move, and it indeed has been pretty much midweek forward all the way through the 113 level. The big story, though, at the end of the week was the strength in dollar yen. As surprisingly, it's not like there was a, str a strength in U.S. yields. Um, there was a modest or mild risk on trade, which is really what I think gave dollar yen the. Uh, the juice to go higher. Um, and, you know, this week, I think the key event that we're going to be looking at, we'll take a look at the calendar, is going to be the U.S. consumer. Ironically enough, the, the backdrop economically is really not as uh, bullish as you would think. But dollar yen is trading right now much more on just the benign risk on flows as the risk from Brexit, the sort of collapse of the eurozone, all the existential stuff that we've been worrying about maybe fading a little bit more and there's just a little bit more left in the equity rally i think in many ways as the equity goes so goes dollar yen so watch this rally um, carefully but be mindful of the fact that i think you can stall at any time around these levels and cable is really showing i think that after all of the positive flows over the last um, several weeks on the assumption that indeed the hard brexit wasn't going to be a reality for now um now there's a lot of anticlimactic flows, and, and in many ways, cable is, is looking weak because despite the fact that they were able to dodge the bullet of spinning out uncontrollably out of the Eurozone, there's still literally no resolution to the issue. It still looks very muddled, and there's still now, in some ways, even a greater chance that they may not come to any kind of a meaningful compromise. So um, in many ways, cable, I think, is a, is a relative weakness trade this week, unless we can get... Um, positive UK data and, and the market's mind just kind of goes off of it. But I do think that we're kind of having this post-Brexit hangover trade, and it may be another 100 points to the downside before it kind of wears itself out. Let's take a look at the calendar this week. There is a lot of data that's relatively important on, on the major side. We start off Tuesday with UK jobs data, and it, we're actually bullish that data in, in, in a strong confidence way because it was an uptick in manufacturing and services and jobs. Uh, ironically enough, as I said, uh, economy economy in UK is surprisingly robust uh, relative to where it should have been. And I think in some ways, obviously, it's the result of um, pretty competitive exchange rate mechanisms um, and a relatively benign central bank. I mean, the central bank has, has really kept the credit flow as, as, as open as possible. And also, huge amount of stockpiling and a huge amount, I think, of of forward demand of demand pulled forward we'll see just how strong the uh, uh the data is most importantly what i think would be interesting is if there is bullish um uh, kathy just made a mistake here it should be bullish pound not bullish euro uh if there is bullish uh earnings if if the average weekly earnings really maintain that three and a half percent pace which is the best pace in all of the g7 universe that i think could be actually uh, possibly bullish for, for, for cable and, and the economic data could offset all of this post Brexit angst uh, and change the flow. Uh, so in many ways, that's going to be the pivotal, pivotal uh, data set front of the week for, for cable. Moving into the uh, rest of the week, Zoo coming up on, on, on Tuesday will be, will be interesting just to see uh, what the uh, analysts think. But the really big, big data for the Eurozone is going to come later in the week. I'll, I'll discuss it in a second. Um, next Wednesday, we're going to get the retail, the CPI data, the RPI data. Um, that's mildly bullish pound as, as uh, prices are going to keep pace with, uh, with inflation. None of that, by the way, the interesting thing is that even if the data is positive out of the UK, 
I think there's zero chance that the BOE is going to do anything about it because they're still very much in a crisis mode until they get full confirmation that there is a permanent Brexit solution. So irrespective of what, of what the economic data is, no matter how much pressure they may feel politically, they're not going to tighten credit. Um, and that in some ways is actually obviously, of course, positive UK economy because it's going to run it hot um, and probably going to be positive pound, um, all things being equal and considered. Then into um, the midweek, into Thursday, we get critical European data, which is the PMI data. Now, the reason why the PMI data is, I think, is so important is because this is flash PMI data for April, so absolutely the latest reading. And a lot of the lift in the euro has been essentially under the assumption that, that the worst of the contraction is over, that, that, that there's been a stabilization in demand, and that uh, manufacturing, especially, especially in Germany, is uh, not getting any worse. So if indeed we get even a small bump up here, that's going to be supportive of this Euro rally. On the other hand, I think if we get a, another decline in German manufacturing, um, there could be very, we could go right back to testing that, that, that 112 low in the Euro. I think the shock to the system that, that the European economy is just simply not performing at all uh, is going to begin to dawn on the market. So there is a risk here to the downside with this particular event. Typically, it's interesting. None of these events used to be really important, but now, um, now that we are sort of uh, you know in a post-political situation, economic data is starting to come back to matter again to the marketplace. And if there's a sharp, further sharp decline, and specifically, really the most the most terrible news would be if if the German manufacturing goes into the low 40s, like maybe 40 to 41. That would really put it into a very, very serious contraction and essentially put Germany on path towards a recession. Um, and I just don't see how under that uh, um, scenario, the euro can hold the gains that we saw this week. So that would be the, uh, the really the, the massive catalyst next week as we, as we, as we watch the calendar. Um, then into uh, Thursday night, we get the retail sales out of UK. Again, uh, the, the UK consumer uh, we're actually mildly bearish that, but it's going to be much less important, I think, in many ways than the wage data and the um, CPI data, because obviously there's post-Brexit uh, rebound now that everybody's expecting that the U.S. U.K. consumer is actually going to now spend now that they have a little bit of um, um, now that they bought themselves a little bit of free time. The most important data set from the U.S. side is going to be the retail sales on Thursday here, and here we're mildly bullish on the U.S. data, but remember it has constantly disappointed. The marketplace and if we get another weak reading because despite the fact that there's lots of jobs and there is a modest not by any means torrid wage growth the u.s consumer is not spending especially not on large ticket items such as cars so i think it's going to be very important if this data comes in soft again again I, I, it's going to be very very hard to imagine dollar yen um, making much more headway beyond this 112, 113 level as we go forward. As I said, most of the rally here has been risk on driven rather than fundamentally driven. Then we finally come down with the housing data here. Also, uh, we're seeing a little bit of a recovery in housing. The housing almost has to recover given the fact that rates have come down almost 100 basis points on the, uh, on the mortgage side. But even here, the recovery has certainly been much more tepid than you would think given the, uh, the rate rise. Let's take a look at the charts here and see what the charts are showing us. So we close out. Um, technically, on a pretty positive note on the euro here. We, first of all, we survived the, the downdraft like we talked about. The, the test never um, breaks the, the 111.87. We not only do we, do we survive that, but we recapture and, and trade above the 20 SMA on the day. That's positive. We, didn't, we don't quite hold the highs, but, you know, good enough. Um, it certainly puts a more positive spin on the euro. Again, I think we may be able to just kind of tread water here. I think the, whatever continuation of the rally is going to run into a pretty significant resist here at around the 1350, certainly the 1400 level. But it's going to be end of the week, that Wednesday, Thursday uh, data set. If that proves positive, then I think we have a genuinely strong possibility to run the 1400s. If that proves shockingly negative, it could be a very severe sell-off because the market just at this point, I think, is, is geared up technically to believe that the worst is behind it. And it certainly is going to be surprised by any uh, significantly negative data out of the eurozone. Um, on the yen side, nice clean break here. So we, you know, we've taken out the one twelve. I mean, relative clean break. We're still sort of uh, not quite through this twelve twenty five level, which really would be a big break. And then technically, when you look at that, it really is open territory. 
Once you get past 1225, you really don't have anything until about the 1400. And um, that's certainly going to be a very, very bullish construct uh, for dollar yen here. But, but we do need mildly supportive U.S. data and continuously uh, benign risk on flows. I mean, 235 points in a doubt today. That's a very nice benign flow. S&P 2900. S&P starts moving closer to 2950 towards the towards the highs. You know, in the 3000 in everybody's mindset as a uh, uh, as a psychological figure. That really pulls us um, above everything else. Forget the yields. Forget growth. Forgets anything else. That pulls us way above everything. So um, that's. I think the story with dollar yen here, we are at, at, at key breakout levels. It's been a heartbreaker every time we've gotten here, but I think we're, the situation now looks much more stronger, both from a technical point of view and perhaps even a fundamental point of view, assuming we don't get, hand, we don't get kind of um, sidetracked by, by very negative risk on flows that take us all the way down. So for now, the chart is really starting to look like a more of a long-term bullish move. It's a secondary break. The moving averages are, are, are comfortably one above the other. Um, and this kind of a one-two candle combination generally suggests, I mean, just one more candle through the 1225s um, really confirms the break here and gives us a much stronger degree of confidence that we could make the run towards the 13, 1400. And finally, here's cable. Cable really uh, compressing. And, and it te technically, cable just looks horrible here. You're talking basically a series of lower highs uh, all the way through here. And as I said, if before it was buy the dip continuously as the market believed, believed, believed that there was never going to be a hard Brexit and the market was correct. Now in a, in a post um, hangover Brexit situation, the market is sort of disappointed because there's no, there's no genuine long-term solution. And it seems like it's almost a sell the rally type of situation. As a matter of fact, I would say that unless cable is able to, uh, at this point, the, the proper technical bet is short cable with a stop above the close of the 20 SMA. If the cable comes back and then close above 20 SMA, which in this case is probably going to be, let's just for argument's sake, say 30, um, 31.50 or so. If we close above 31.50, um, then that short trade is negated. But it's, it's, it's a small risk. It's less than 100 point risk from here. On the other hand, um, if, if you sort of take the technicals at their word, uh, then the downdraft here could easily take us down towards a test of the 29s, 2950. That's the this near term support. And could even, if the shorts are emboldened, try to break those, trigger those stops over here and take us perhaps all the way down to the 2850 level. Um, this point, I think, is, is a pretty serious support level. It's not going to come down um, beyond that point unless there is some existential new threat um, on the UK side. But just on a near term basis, it's a sell, sell the rally trade here. And um, unless we close above the 20 SMA, it's really the bear's game to run at this point. So that's how the major set up for this week. Wish you guys the best luck, the best of trading. Boris Lansberg, over and out.